Let's find the intrinsic value of the Cheesecake Factory. And the way we do that is we're going to discount the future free cash flow. So let's start with their market cap, 902.5 million. Ninety-two point five million. Their stock price, nineteen eighty-five. So that means they have forty-five million shares outstanding. And uh, when we figure out the value of the company, we have to divide it by forty-five million to figure out the stock price. Now, free cash flow is the best way to measure the future value of a company, and this is what Warren Buffett and all analysts do, because free cash flow is the lifeblood of the company. It's the cash left over after operating the business and it's actual cash in and out. Net income is not always actual because it, it could be different things going on, accounting, depreciation, write-offs, but cash flow is exactly what it is. Not a lot of cash flow, 100 million, 100 to 200 million. Let's see their net income. At least it's positive, I guess, from year to year. A lot of times you see these companies with negative free cash flow, negative net income, and people are investing in these companies with no, no profits. That's what happened in the dot-com boom. All these companies with no profits went bust. So now we need revenue for the past four years. It looks pretty consistent. 2.2 to 2.4 billion. <clears throat> and my um, spreadsheet is calculating the estimated future free cash flow. which it already did. But we still need to figure out that capital structure so we know what to discount the cash flows by. So let's get their interest expense, which I don't see. Well, the, they may not have any debt. They do have long-term debt. of 290 million. Looks like they took on a lot of debt in 2019. Long term means it's due with over a year of the debt. And they don't report an interest expense. It might be it might be hidden in the other field, total other income. And expenses. Let's just drop that in and see what we get. So that looks right, 5% interest rate on the debt. So let's go with that. And then the income before tax, because we need to find their effective tax rate, because we have to reduce the debt by the tax rate. So they pay 9%, which is pretty low on their taxes. So even though they paid 5% on the debt, it's really about 4.6% after taxes. So that's the cost of debt. And then to figure out the cost of equity, we need the beta, which is the volatility of the stock. So this is not too volatile, um, 1.4 beta. So the cost of equity is 13.07% and we use a capital asset pricing model to figure that out. And when you blend the two together, debt and equity, it's 11%. So we have to discount the future cash flows by 11%. And we come up with an, a future value of the company of 2.5 billion. And if you divide that by the shares outstanding, it's actually trading at a pretty big discount. We estimate the stock's worth $56 and it's trading at 20. So it's a 65% discount. So it's definitely a buy according to the discounted cash flow model. Of course, there's other factors you need to look at besides previous 
numbers. You also have to look at the future viability of the company, especially during coronavirus. How are revenues going to be? How are expenses going to be? Will people um, still come to their stores? Um, let's look at the stock price the past five years. I'm curious. So we estimate $56 intrinsic value. And you could see it, it uh, actually it was trading around that price for a while, for, for many years, $50, $60. So it was trading at intrinsic value for, for several years. And then there was a drop off in 2019, not too much of a drop off. And then it fell off a cliff like everything else in March when the coronavirus hit. So it was trading not around intrinsic, a slight discount to intrinsic, but it's now it's trading at a pretty severe discount to intrinsic value. So you're getting a good deal if you feel the future viability of the company is safe. So let me know what you think of the video. Thanks for watching.